Books. I love them, but I didn't always. I guess that's not entirely true. I loved being read too, but I did not enjoy reading. My parents started reading to me like basically as soon as I came out of the womb, so I'm guessing that's what began my love of storytelling. Does anyone remember the highlights for kids magazines? Are those even still a thing or am I just old? <laughs> Anywho, time frame is unimportant. In those magazines, they had little short stories with pictures above some of the words, so if like the word was cat, there would be a picture of a cat overhead. Well, that was me and my dad's like special reading thing together. So as soon as the magazine would come in the mail, we'd sit and read the stories. He'd say, Okay, you're gonna read some of the words this time, right? And I'd say, <laughs> No, Daddy. I'll read the pictures. You read the words. And that didn't end up going over very well, because he made me read the words anyways. So I was reading pretty well by about three years old, but I did not enjoy it. I wanted to be read too, but I could not be bothered to do the actual reading. And this deep-seated hatred of reading continued for many years. I was homeschooled, so reading for an hour a day was basically mandatory. And annoyingly, my mom would only count reading a comic book for about 15 minutes of that hour. I was really big into the old Garfield comics, and our local library had book after book after book of those things, and it was amazing. I owe much of my sarcastic sense of humor to those comics. <laughs> they were great. But alas, there were other genres of books out there besides comics, and my parents were determined that I should give them a try. And I did. And I hated it. The only books that appealed to me were ones with pictures. <laughs> and I was more than willing to risk punishment to read them. Growing up as the youngest in my family, it sucked when my bedtime was earlier than my sister's. And one night, five-year-old Allie thought, Well, Aubrey gets to stay up till 8.30 reading, and I have to go to bed at 8.15? I'm a big girl, I can read too. And so, in the heat of rebellion, I turned my lamp back on, grabbed whatever Stanley in the big book of everything story I was reading at the time, and read my book. A few minutes later, my mom saw the light under the door that apparently I didn't think to hide. So she came in, and we made eye contact. And I knew I was in big trouble. But she just looked at me, looked at my book, looked back up at me, and said, Go to bed. And left. And I thought I had gotten off the hook for some major crime. But in reality, I think my mom was just trying to leave the room before she busted out laughing. <laughs> my big moment of rebellion, <laughs> reading past curfew. Anyways, I really thought I hated reading for the longest time. The only non-picture books I attempted were all like biographies for school or whatever. I don't even know. But I hated reading with a passion until I found my genre. My sister was reading these books called The Dragon Keeper Chronicles, and I asked her one day what they were about. It was a simple question, but my sister is the queen of oversharing when it comes to books. So she proceeded to keep me updated on the books over the course of her reading journey about everything that was going on. She spoiled major plot points, but would keep the tiniest details a secret from me, and that was really annoying. So finally I gave in and started reading the books because I hate not knowing things. And thus began a love affair with books that didn't include pictures. Within a few chapters, I was completely hooked, and I think I read the entire series in like three weeks. I had discovered the genre of fantasy. Moral of the story is, if you don't like reading, try another genre, you might just fall in love. And to this day, reading is one of my all-time favorite hobbies. So let's talk about some of my favorite books, shall we? I won't include art books, although I have a massive collection of them, because it would take way too long. <laughs> we'll stick to fiction for today. However, let me know if you want to see an art book tour, because I would love to share my collection with you. So over the past year, I've been catching up on some of the more fan-favorite series that I hadn't read. My sister read Harry Potter when she was little, and because she liked it so much, that meant that I had to hate it, even though I hadn't read it. I refused to read it until last year, and when I finally did, I of course loved it because it's amazing. <laughs> it is brilliantly written. An academy for wizards where you can study cool things like herbology and potions? I mean, what's not to love? I also decided to read The Lord of the Rings last year, and I was really proud of myself that it didn't take me the entire year to read them. Are they long-winded? Yes. Maybe a little too much information about trees? Arguable. <laughs> but they were fantastic! And like Harry Potter, I totally understand why they're popular books. 
There was quite a bit of story left out from the movies, and it was really interesting seeing other parts of Middle Earth. I read The Hobbit a while back with my dad, and I'm still slowly but surely making my way through The Silmarillion. So both of those book series have a great amount of wit, but my favorite sarcastic series are the Percy Jackson series and the series of unfortunate events. I just finished reading the series of unfortunate events, and I firmly believe they do not get as much hype as they deserve. The wit is truly iconic. They're so chaotic, and I love all the little like breaking the fourth wall type of jokes. And don't even get me started on Percy Jackson and, and also Heroes of Olympus. I haven't read them in way too long, but they're still some of my favorites. I'm very hopeful for the new Percy Jackson TV series that Disney Plus is going to be doing. I think they just announced some of the casting for it, possibly? I don't know. Anyways, I'm cautiously optimistic. So Beauty and the Beast has always been one of my favorite fairy tales, and I have read many adaptations of this fairy tale over the years. Several of them were pretty good, most of them were just okay, <laughs> but a few of them were truly terrible. There's one that really stands out in my memory, but unfortunately I don't remember the title. Anyways, in this adaption, Belle is a whiny brat that's kidnapped by a griffin. Tale as old as time, they start to enjoy each other's company, but in this book, Gaston is her boyfriend and basically skins the griffin alive because, I don't know, his, feather, his feathers are valuable or something. So obviously Belle is now traumatized, like, who wouldn't be? Her best friend was just brutally murdered. So my thought now is, There's no coming back from that, right? Wrong. Belle's long dead mother sends the Griffin Prince back from the grave as a man on the last page, and that's literally the end of the book. It was weird and gruesome, and I didn't like it. <laughs> so anyways, let's talk about some lesser known books that I do love, shall we? I will begin with the most beautiful book series I have ever read. And I'm not even talking about the covers, although those were beautiful as well, and were what inspired me to read the books in the first place. This is the Green Ember series. Now I had previously heard nothing about these books. Books about bunnies. Children's books about bunnies. Yes, I am, at the time, probably like 17 years old reading books about bunnies, <laughs> but hear me out. It's like Lord of the Rings meets Peter Rabbit. The nostalgia of forest animals, but the high fantasy of Middle-earth. The first book introduces two of our main characters, Heather and Pickett. They live a pretty sheltered life in a quiet forest treehouse with their family, and their father tells them stories every evening without mentioning the reality of the stories. Some events take place that bring Heather and Pickett into a wider community of rabbits, where they begin to discover more of the backstory of the forest and the tyrant predator ruling it. The series is an epic battle between good and evil, full of betrayal and fellowship, and it is absolutely fantastic. I'm really- I'm not doing it justice, I'm terrible at explaining books, but it is really good. Is it technically written for kids? Yes. But it is easily enjoyable by adults too. It's not written with the very flowery kid language, it just puts the realities of life in a context that kids can kind of relate better to, I guess. I don't know. Fair warning, you will cry in book four. There's no way around that. Next up is my current read, the Nevermore series. And yes, I am aware that these are technically children's books as well. <laughs> it's not my fault that these authors make content enjoyable for all ages. And this really should be no surprise to you anyways, given that I'm a big fan of so many animated movies. <laughs> Anywho, I've only just started book two by about the third chapter of the first book. I picked it up at the library thinking, Alright, that's an interesting title. Cool cover. But then I started reading it, and I was like, <gasps> The wit. The subtle dark undertones. The relatability of our main character. I must continue. And I did. Very quickly. 450 pages, less than a week. In all fairness, we did lose our Wi-Fi for a couple of days over the weekend, so I had a lot of time. Our story begins with Morrigan Crow. A cursed ch A cursed ch A cursed... I can't say cursed. <laughs> cursed child. There we go. Doomed to die on her 12th birthday. Having accepted her fate, she sits down to enjoy her last meal because I too would be most concerned about eating my favorite food if I knew I was going to die today. <laughs> so a mystery man shows up, offering her a chance to cheat death. Of course she accepts, because who wouldn't, and is whisked away to Nevermore, where she begins a series of trials in order to achieve a spot at their wondrous society. It's like Hogwarts, but for Nevermore. 
It's a lot more complicated than that, but I don't want to spoil anything, so I'll just leave it at that. Like I said, I just started the second book, and I didn't think it was possible, but it's even better than the first. So if you like magical creatures, cursed people, and sarcasm, give them a read. I promise you're not gonna regret it. So along that same trail of magical worlds with sarcastic characters, I give you A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking, A Dead Body, A Sourdough Starter Named Bob, Ornery Gingerbread Men, Need I Say More? <laughs> Basically it's about an apprentice baker with a, with a gift for controlling dough. She's on the run from a mysterious man assassinating wizards. It's great! You should read it. Now not all of the books I read are fantasy. Most are, but not all of them. I also really enjoy reading classics. Call me crazy, but I loved Shakespeare in high school. Again, the wit! Did I need cliff notes to understand said wit? Yes, I did, <laughs> but that's okay. I read A Midsummer Night's Dream and The Taming of the Shrew, and they were fantastic. I did not, however, enjoy reading Charles Dickens' Great Expectations. Horridly unlikable main character who learned absolutely nothing and got progressively worse throughout the book. And it was so dang long for no reason. Unbelievably hard to read. Seriously, a single chapter would take me two hours to get through. Honestly, Tim Burton's movie The Corpse Bride has a lot of the same story elements and it was a heck of a lot more interesting. So in my opinion, skip reading Ex Great Expectations and watch The Corpse Bride instead. Another favorite classic of mine is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Very problematic relationship. I mean, honestly, that does not even begin to describe the relationship of the main characters. But anyways, I love Charlotte's writing style. There are a lot of darker undertones to her writing that make her stories really interesting and layered. I also read her book, Valette, which was odd. <laughs> the ending was vague and weird, but it was really good. There were many paragraphs in French, and I took French in high school, but that didn't help me very much for this. But anyways, I still really enjoyed it. Oh, Daddy Longlegs! That is a very underrated classic. It's a fiction book from 1912 written by Jean Webster, and it's basically a collection of letters from our main character, Jerusha, to her mysterious patron, who she's nicknamed Daddy Longlegs, due to having seen his obnoxiously long shadow. Spoiler alert, this book is so, so heartwarming and so funny. I actually found out about this book because there's a really great musical adaptation of it. And speaking of musical adaptions of books, let's talk about a book adaption of a musical. Alice by Heart. Yes, we have returned to our previously scheduled fantasy programming. But this one's a little bit different. Our story takes place in an underground tube station following the London Blitz of World War II, where we meet Alice and Alfred, a couple of preteens that have been best friends since they were little. Alice in Wonderland was their favorite book and was always the story they would play pretend. So Alfred is suffering from tuberculosis and Alice retells him the story of Wonderland in an effort to ease his pain. The book switches back and forth between their World War II reality and their own adventure in Wonderland as Alice and a white rabbit running out of time. I cried the entire time and was really bummed out for like a week after reading it, but it was great. So I love reading, which was what inspired this theme of studies for my 100 scene studies challenge. Libraries. The smell of dusty old books, the rustle of a page flip, and the crippling pain as it smashes your nose when you lose your grip on it while you're reading on the floor. I love books, so obviously I love libraries as well. I knew these five scenes needed to be truly iconic, and I'm very happy with my choices. First up was the library from Ghostbusters. Get her? <laughs> Anyways, I couldn't decide which, which still from this scene I wanted to paint. Their reactions after the ghost scares them are amazing, but I thought capturing the ghost librarian would be a little bit more of an interesting shot to paint. I loved her transparent skirt and the really eerie shift in lighting on the floor. Next up was another Dark Crystal Age of Resistance scene, the Harar Library. <laughs> Try saying that, five times says. I can barely say it once. Anyways, the spiral staircases with shelves in the rails and the mood lighting, not to mention the little paper eating fluffums. I mean, this library is awesome. The fluffums weren't actually in their reference photo, but I added them regardless. Once again, I really tried to simplify the background by only bringing out a few details in the shadow shapes. Day three was probably my favorite from this theme. Evie balancing on the ladder in the library from the mummy. I just like to say, 
I want to be Evie when I grow up. Anywho, the lighting and atmosphere in this scene is really interesting because there's this kind of hazy effect in the back near the light. But there's also a lot of shadow in the foreground, which definitely made things easier for me to simplify. I took some liberties with Evie by adding more movement to her skirt and necktie, because when you're watching a movie, it's easy to remember that things are in motion, but when you're looking at a painting, characters can look very static if their actions aren't well conveyed. Even just adding a little swooshing of a skirt can, can help imply movement for a character. Anyways, I painted this one on cold pressed watercolor paper because I really wanted a lot of time to work wet on wet, and also I thought the texture of the paper would add a lot to the piece. After that was the Beast's Library from Beauty and the Beast, and I could not do this theme without including this scene. Honestly, I think my favorite part of the painting were the bookend and the books in the foreground on the desk. Again, it was really fun kind of picking those, kind of picking those details out of the shadows. Belle's face turned out really patchy because I still don't know how to paint skin with gouache, but oh well, moving on. The final painting is the Hogwarts Library from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. I've been wanting to do a Harry Potter scene study, and this felt like the perfect theme for that. I planned this particular scene for Friday because I try to slow down my work pace and ease into the weekend. If I don't, I usually end up working too much over the weekend and end up exhausted and gritchy the following Monday, and nobody likes that. Anywho, I knew this scene would take me less time to paint because there isn't a character, other than Harry's hand, and it has a pretty limited color palette. It ended up taking me about three and a half hours from start to finish, in one sitting. I take that back, I had to take a pee break 15 minutes from the end because I literally could not hold it any longer. But anywho, I put on some music and just painted. I was so in the zone and so focused and so relaxed. I had plans with my mom that afternoon, so I knew the painting had to be finished before lunch. And honestly, I think that time restraint, that time constraint really helped me focus in and not noodle around too much. I really love the warm versus cool light in this scene and all of the really interesting detailing on the books. I basically blocked in my shadow shapes and painted in one shelf at a time. There's some sort of sphere in the bottom left corner that I'm really proud of for some reason. I don't know, I've really been enjoying experimenting with bringing form into shadow shapes in minimal brush strokes. And speaking of brush strokes, why yes, that is dry brushing on the wooden shelves. I could not make it through this piece without adding my favorite brush technique. I also might have added a touch of purple to the lantern just for funsies. I think the mummy library was my favorite end result, but this one was definitely the most enjoyable painting experience. So that's it for today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed watching the painting process of the library theme and chatting with me about books. Let me know what some of your favorite books are down in the comments. If you like my art and want to see more of it, head on over to Patreon and subscribe for as low as a dollar a month. It really helps me out and we get to hang out more. Anywho, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye guys!